What's up everybody, it's Smitty. I'm going to show you the right way to do a conventional deadlift today, how to set up without wrecking your back. This comes on the heels of my other video, how to bench without wrecking your shoulders, and I think this one's going to be really popular as well. So let's get started. Right, we're going to show Brad here. Come on over here and look at his feet. First thing you're going to notice is he's got wrestling sneaks on. It does a few different things. One, it puts him lower to the ground, so he has to pull the bar a shorter distance. The second thing is it gives him a nice flat surface to drive his feet off of. Now when he comes up to the bar, you see a lot of guys, they put their shin right on the bar. They, they start deadlifting right here with their shin on the bar. And when he goes to grab the bar, look, his shoulders are ahead of the bar and his hips are way high. He can't drive his hips down, which is the good starting position. That's where you want to be. So before he goes into the bar, he wants to go ahead and set up. He wants to be off of the bar, probably four to six inches. Come on over here and uh, look down here. He should be able to see his toes uh, from looking on the top position. Now, when he goes down to address the bar, watch his knees come forward. That's exactly where he wants to be. Go ahead and go over to the side here. So, stand up again. Four to six inches off the bar, when he goes down, his knees come forward, grabs the bar. Okay, now his back position. Move, his, move your hips up. You see a lot of guys pulling stiff leg here. The proper position, he's going to drive his feet down, translate his knees forward, and close that distance between his shins and the bar. Go ahead and do that. Okay. When he does that, see his back dropping line, he's arching, and he's bracing. Stand up right. Now, when his hips are high, go ahead and put your hips high. I want him to catch that air. He's going to catch a big belly full of air. He's going to push his abs out. Translate his knees forward, drop down, and his head comes up. Now, if you look at his head here, it can be in line with the spine or slightly up. Okay? If it's in line with the spine, we're nice and protected here. If it's slightly up, we're still okay. Go ahead and stand up. Okay, we're going to go over these points again real quick. Shins off the bar. Okay? He's going to grab the bar shoulder width apart, slightly outside of his knees. Okay? He's going to take a huge belly full of air, translate his knees forward, drop his hips, brace his abs out, okay, and he starts to come up. Go ahead and drive. Okay. Return it back down. He's going to RDL and then drop straight down. Hop up. So a lot of things happen there. When he drives his feet, first thing I want you to realize is when it gets to your knees, okay, you see a lot of guys hyping it way back into hyperextension. We don't want that. Go ahead and do it again. Watch his setup. Always watch the setup. He's going to do it the same way every time. And when, stop at your knees there. Go ahead and pull it to your knees. He's going to take a big air. Translate knees forward. Drop your hips. And when he gets a little bit higher, when he gets to his knees here, that's exactly when he takes a powerful glute contraction and he drives straight up into lockout. He doesn't pull with his back back this way. Go ahead and come over to the side here. Go ahead and finish that. Please. Okay, go back down to your knees. Now I want you to pull the wrong way into hyperextension. Okay, see how he locks it up? We don't want that. Go back down to your knees. All I want him to do is squeeze his ass real hard and stand straight up. He wants to be a straight line. We don't want to go into hyperextension. Okay, so return it back down. The other thing is, when he returns it back to the ground, we're going to reverse the movement. We're not going to take it here and drop straight down. We're going to RDL the weight and then drop straight down when he gets past the knees. Go ahead. Watch the setup. Drive your knees forward. Hips down. Drive. Okay. He's going to RDL. Drop straight down. That's how you return it back to the floor. You see a lot of guys just going straight down with the weight. You want to RDL, keep those hamstrings and glutes on tension, and then drop straight down. Let's do three reps in a row. Feet are in a power position, slightly narrower than uh, shoulder width. And we always do the double overhand grip until it fails. And then we can switch to the alternate grip, switch to the hook grip, or switch to straps. Reset that air. Good, you 
see a lot of the elite powerlifters put a lot of stress on their biceps. Some of them even tear when they go to the alternated grip. Now we don't like to train that alternated grip until we definitely have to. And even then, we prefer a hook grip. Hook grip is where you lock your thumb underneath your first two fingers. Okay, that's a hook grip. So when we go double overhand, that's the position we want. Okay, so uh, protecting that bicep, because when we do the alternated grip, that bicep is in a bad position. Okay, so uh, let's go over point by point, and then we're going to be done with the video. Go ahead. Feet are away, shins. He's going to translate those shins forward on the hip drop. Okay, grab the bar, hips are high, take a big breath. It's going to brace his abs out, arch his back, translate the knees forward till they touch the bar, and then he's going to drive the floor away. When it gets to his knees, he has a powerful glute contraction to finish into a perfect straight lockout. RDL the weight to his knees, drop straight down. When he gets to his knees, squeeze your glutes hard right into a straight line. That's it. You don't pull and reach back. That's a no-no. Go ahead and return it down. Now the last point I'm going to make is tension. Full body tension. Now we talked about bracing the core. Okay, the lateral hoop tendons come around and brace the lower back when you increase that inner abdominal pressure. Okay, that's the natural belt that you have. So we always take that belly full of air and brace outward. Okay, and it stabilizes our lower back. The second thing, that's tension here, but we need tension in the lower back or in the upper back. That's when you take the slack out of the bar. Now I'm going to show you two different ways. Jerk the weight off the floor. Brad's not going to have any tension in his back and he's just going to jerk the weight off the floor. We don't want to do that. Try one more. Jerk it? Yeah. His elbows are bending. He's losing power. When your elbows bend, you lose power in the deadlift. You want your arms to be straight like a rope. Now what we want to do is we want to create tension in his lat and his back because the back is part of the core part of the torso so we brace our abs and we tense our lower back and it solidifies that tension and protects the spine so the back don't forget is part of the core so before he uh, before he pulls on that bar he's going to squeeze his back real hard like a like he's doing a pull up or a row and he's going to pull his lats down into a real hard isometric content, uh, contraction go ahead and do it again he's going to do it the right way this time you take the slack out of the bar by creating tension in your back and slightly tugging on the weight. See that? Now he comes up. Okay, go ahead and reset and then show him loose and then tense your back. Watch right here when he tenses. Good. Now if I came over here, one of the coaching cues, go ahead and set it down. I'm going to come over and, you know, do a little raking on this area and make sure it's tight. It's real tight right here. It's going to translate forward and drive straight up. All right, straight down first. All right, this is Smitty from Diesel Crew. That's the right way to do a conventional deadlift. And uh, thanks for stopping by. Please rate the video below. Really appreciate it.